Welcome everyone. In this session, we're going to talk about uh, lab details and pre-request for KVM installation. In pre-request is first pre-request is uh, processors which supports Intel VT or AMD V depending upon your processor type. We need a Linux operating system with the minimum kernel version 2.6.20. Super user, basically root or equivalent access on the host system, ISO media for guest OS installation. On my lab machine, uh, that's basically a VM running on uh, VMware workstation. It got CentOS 7.4 installed. In resources, it got two vCPUs, which are Intel Core i7 8 gen uh, processors, 6 GB RAM. From network point of view, it got uh, two NIC cards, VNIC1, VNIC2. The first NIC card is used for host-only network. The second NIC card is bridged to Wi-Fi adapter for public uh, communication, basically internet connectivity. In storage, it got uh, two virtual disk, disk 1 and disk 2. Disk 1 is operating system drive, 20 gig in size. Disk 2 is to store guest VM images. It is 40 GB in size. VT extensions are enabled because that's a pre-request for KVM. From security, I got SC Linux enabled and it is running in targeted mode, which is basically SC Linux is enabled and uh, working. Pre-work or pre-check, basically you have to check whether your processor is supporting VT extensions or not. You can see on screen, uh, I'm grabbing SVM or VMX. Depending upon your processor type, you can flip them or you can grab. If they are enabled, they will be displayed uh, as a command output. Then next thing I'm doing, I'm just checking the kernel version with unim a After that, uh, I'm running yum update minus y to make sure uh, that my system is at latest patch level from security and uh, features point of view. So let me quickly uh, take you through the lab. Guys, this is a VM which is running CentOS 7, as I mentioned. If I go to VM settings, I can show you here, it got 6 GB RAM, eight processor. Basically, I have allocated two processors and uh, each processor got four cores, so it turns uh, eight uh, threads. 20 GB first drive, 40 GB second drive, VMNet1, VMNet2. This is VMNet1, which is host only. VMNet1 is VMNet1 mapping, which is basically a bridge interface in VMware settings. And uh, the main thing is in processor, you can see I have, you can see this tick mark here. This is a bit uh, gray, but uh, this is enabled one. So I have enabled virtualized Intel VT or AMDV and have set prefer mode to automatic. In case you are having physical hardware, you have to enable Intel VT or CPU related setting in the BIOS. Saying OK here. You can see here, uh, I have specially noted this thing. VT can be enabled or disabled in BIO setting. Most hardware manufacturers keep it disabled by default. In case your VT is not enabled, just go to BIO settings and go to your processor, enable the Intel VT or virtualization technology. AMDV can't be disabled in BIO, so by default on any system with AMD processor, if it supports the virtual extensions, that will be enabled by default. So let's quickly check uh, the Pre-work things. Let's uh, check the kernel version. You can see it's uh, 3.10. The minimum requirement is 2.6.20, so we are far ahead uh, and we are good on uh, kernel. Let's check uh, whether the processor supports uh, VT extension. You can see we can we have output uh, which is saying VMX. VMX. VMX is basically for Intel. If you got AMD processor, it will be displayed uh, as VM. So our processor support uh, VT. That's good thing. And let's update the system. Yum update minus Y. The system is updated. So no packages marked for update. In case your system gets updated, uh, 
then just do a clean reboot after this one. So with this, uh, I can confirm my system supports uh, VT, kernel requirements are met, system is up to date. So we are ready for next steps for installing KVM. That's it in this session, guys. Thank you.